Hello and welcome back to the TNC podcast. Never did I think we would be going about things this way, but we are due to the coronavirus. We're having to self-isolate at the moment. I'm currently in Surrey at my flat. Chris is in Norwich in his house uh, and we are having to stay apart because who knows, we might have it and we really do want to keep safe. Um, And please do, if you're watching, please do go about government guidelines, whether that's self-isolating, whether that's not going outside, whatever you want to do to keep you safe, please do comply because we're all in this together and it's the only way we're going to beat what is a fairly serious virus. Chris, how are you, mate? Did you say fairly serious, by the way? Very, yeah. Extremely, isn't it? I mean, one of the things I was going to say straight away is, um, you know, people are doing like the the, the wash your hands happy birthday. Just get rid of that to, uh, we're going up, we're going down, we're going up. I actually, <laughs> oh, yeah. the city works equally as well. Yeah, get some the, tunes in there. The way I did it was I put on Chris Gorham's commentary on the Simeon Jackson goal. And the YouTube video to that's actually one minute and three seconds. Well, I've been washing my hands galore. What it does mean now, though, is um, I've got slightly dried out skin, which isn't ideal. But there we go. <laughs> How am I? I'm I'm okay, thank you for asking. I'm obviously understandably a little bit can well, a little bit. I'm very worried about the uh, the current state of um society and uh business particularly is um business is really, really shaky at the moment. Um not not just our business but all businesses and um, and I think also and, and I'm sure we'll touch on it, Jack, in this podcast, like one of the things that me and Jack want to commit to guys for everyone that's watching is we want to commit to you in this and we want to open our open our arms out to you and say look if you want to talk to us if you want to dm tnc please feel free don't be alone in this and um, there's going to be there's going to be some massive strains on on your mental health and um, and yeah me and jack just wanted to be super clear from the off and and make sure that you know from this podcast straight away that we are genuinely hand on heart here for you during this process because it's not going to be a case of two or three weeks. This is going to be one, two, three, four, possibly even six months by the looks of things at least. So, um, yeah, and I would just encourage as well, and I'm preaching a bit now, Jack, forgive me. I'd just encourage as well, please don't spend so much time on, on Twitter reading the coronavirus hashtag because it's full of it's full of actually people that aren't qualified to give you information, trying to give you information. So, just be careful. Take everything with a pinch of salt, just like the January transfer rumours. Um, and yeah, just just make the effort to talk to as many people as possible every day. Yeah, I've, I, although this is a really kind of stressful time and a lot of negativity bouncing about, I've actually seen a lot of positivity coming out of this. I've seen fantastic work in the community. I live in a in a block of um, flats, and, and everyone's helping out. We've got a WhatsApp group where people are offering to go get elderly people shopping, whatever that may be. Um, from a personal point of view, I've been able to reflect and I've been doing lots of reading and playing football manager. I'm back into that. The addiction has really begun. Um, so there has been positives. I'm also stocking up on these Waitrose sunshine shots. Oh, you um, stink at Waitrose. Mainly you because stink. it's the only thing left in there. Um, you are going to get rinsed for using Waitrose, by the way. We've we've had the piss taken out of us before. But actually, I think it's a case of just shop anywhere that you can at well, the moment. Well, that's the thing. Like, one, it's the closest supermarket. Two, yeah. it's the only place with anything in there. Yes. So yeah. um, anyway, let's get into some, some Norwich City stuff. Over the past week yeah. or so, while I haven't been working at home, I've been reading a lot on The Athletic. Thank you to The Athletic for sponsoring this podcast. If you want to keep up to date with all of the latest educational pieces on how the coronavirus affects football or just some lighter hearted pieces just to get you away from the, the, the fairly grim news at the moment, then you can sign up to The Athletic at the uh, web address theathletic.co.uk forward slash Talk Norwich City and that will give you 50% off plus a free seven day trial. It works out to under £2.50 a month. If you don't like it after that seven day free trial, you can cancel and it won't cost you anything. Michael Bailey's been doing some really wonderful stuff on there. And it also talks about the real severity to the bottom um, clubs in the EFL pyramid. You look at the likes of Southend, Macclesfield. These clubs may be going under because of the mm-hmm. coronavirus, depending on how the outcome of this season goes. So it's really enthralling reading on there at the moment. Grim at times. There's some really good stuff on there. If you want to go over there and help us out as well, then please do. The links will be in the description below. Um, Chris, let's talk about Norwich for a little bit. We're coming off the back of 
a really um, good result against Spurs um, in the FA Cup, although we might not be able to see out the FA Cup. What is your current perspective? I know there's more important things about the current football season. How do you see it playing out? Well, first of all, Jack, I, I personally think that you, you, you can't uh, you can't play out this season for me. I think that playing football behind closed doors is just silly bollocks. I think it's an absolute nonsense. Football without fans is nothing. It's a coin phrase that gets chucked around all the time, but it's completely true. I also really, really, really disagree with giving Liverpool the title, but they're not awarding the Champions League places. Um, or not, or not relegating people as well. By the way, taking my Norwich City glasses off now, I, I genuinely, hand on heart, believe that you need to make it void to make it fair for everyone. And I never, ever thought I'd say this, Jack, ever. But I actually feel really sorry for Sheffield United. I feel really sorry for Aston Villa because these are clubs with games in hand that would see them either in the Champions League place potentially or out of the relegation spot. So. For me, you have to avoid the season. You have to start from scratch. Um, and, Are you and just think, saying that because it will benefit Norwich City? No, and that's no, and that's why I made it super, super clear from the off that I'm. It's it's going to annoy Liverpool fans me saying this, but I, I don't think Liverpool should win the league in this in this circumstance. I don't, and I don't. I also don't think people should be awarded Champions League places in this circumstance as well. I, I think it has to be void. It has to be, and. Looking at it from a Norwich City point of view, uh, obviously our audience are Norwich fans. I, I would be a bit pissed off if they played games behind closed doors because of the fact, Jack, that we've got five home games still that we can win. Now, if we do not have that home advantage of playing in front of our fans, that's completely unfair. And then you look at Brighton's run in. Brighton have got a really tough run in. They've got some really hard away games, some hard home games. And you think to yourself... Actually, you know what? It would be really unfair to play this behind closed doors because then all of a sudden playing at home basically is just pointless. So for me, um, I, I promise you, I'm not just saying this from a Norwich City point of view. Of, of course, I'll be uh, popping open a bottle of champers when, when you know we, we get told that we're in the Premier League for another season. But to be honest with you, I know it sounds a bit strange, but I actually don't really care that much at the moment. Um, I think there's bigger fish to fry. Um, you know, we've got our families to feed and grandmas and granddads to look after. So I think um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, how the Premier League season's going to be and, and what's going to happen to it. But um, of course, it's not the priority at the moment. Yeah, of course. I mean, there are other solutions that have been talked about. And I, and I, and I, I want to avoid kind of speculating here. The other... Um, instance that could happen is now that the Euros have been delayed to 2021 that does free up a bit of space through the summer in which football can be played and of course the season's currently being delayed until I think it's April the 4th we're not going to be seeing football for a long time after that point but there could be a situation where if we can get games on the season could maybe be played through until October November next year and at least then you can complete a full season what that then does mean though is you're cutting into next season and, and cup competitions are going to have to be scrapped. There's a lot of things going on. And of course, I've iterated it slightly earlier on in this podcast, but Premier League teams here financially are probably going to be okay. Where it does get really worrying is when match day staff can't get paid and they're relying on that to, to, to pay rent or, or their mortgage. When you've got clubs who can't pay players and you know we always say, well, football players are okay. They're living lifestyles that are relative to their income. And once that income stops, they're in a really tricky situation. So there's massive, massive decisions to be made here. And whatever decision is made, it's going to annoy some people. It seems bonkers, yeah. it seems ludicrous that Liverpool might not win the Premier League. But every yeah. day that goes past, it seems more realistic that that will be the case, which is saddening. But as you said there, Chris, that we, we have got bigger fish to fry. And, and the sole outcome of this and the primary kind of thing that we all want is that the amount of people who are kept safe. And um, yeah. that's... The, the thing is, though, Jack, on, on the note of Liverpool, Liverpool have got what it takes to win the season next season. And, um, you know, I heard uh, I heard one of the geezers from Redmen saying, well, we've waited 30 years, so what's the difference of waiting another one? Mm. And, and I agree with that completely. I think that there are a lot of sensible Liverpool fans out there saying exactly what you've just yeah. said, Jack, echoing yeah. your thoughts. 
understanding that actually life is more important than just than than, than football. Um, I know football is mega important, but literally life and death um, is is on the table in many circumstances here. That's without a shadow of a doubt. So um, yeah, and I, I think not to yeah, I don't want this to all be doom and gloom, but I just got a point, Jack, about the community aspect of what's going on at the moment and. And actually, a lot of people are uh, very aware of the key component parts in their life being family, being health, um, being their career, and sometimes spirituality. But another massive thing that a lot of people have taken for granted for a long time is community. And now we're not going to football matches. We're not getting that community. Yeah. And I'm, and what I'm saying now is I'm, I'm actually making a plea and a call out to all North City supporters more than ever before make the effort this week to contact as many Norwich fans, so not just your friends and family, as many Norwich fans as possible. And if you want to just chat about Norwich, if you want to share a joke about it, just do that. But make the effort to talk to Norwich fans and be more of a community as soon as possible. Yeah, it's massively important. And, you know, my touch point with you, I guess, through a week is seeing you at home game. That's now being cut out. So we've made it. Um, you know, we've called each other every day, which is, is super important for me. Otherwise, you, we, we could be going days, weeks without talking to people and that's not healthy for anyone. Yeah. Anyway, we don't want to be speculating anymore. Let's try yeah. and bring some lightheartedness. We, if you want to see more of these TNC podcasts, then if this episode hits 100 likes on YouTube, we can certainly do more this week. Something we do have now is time, which is good. Chris, we asked some um, for people to get in touch on Twitter for some Twitter questions. The first question is from Ollie Barnard, and he asks if you could be quarantined with one past player and one current player, who would it be? <laughs> well, first of all, Ollie and um, Ollie B, the big man. Um, what a question! What a question! He's delivered. Um, um, uh, wow, Jack, do you have any solutions straight away? I mean, they, they, you could pick a lot of people for a lot of reasons. I um, think my... I'll I tell you what, shall I do the current and you do the past? Or do you want to... Both I had one for current. I had one for current, okay, actually. Go ahead. And, and, and one of them is Tim Krull. Okay. Um, and the reason being, he's a big man. You're not going to mess around with him. Um, he's the kind of person that can reach the bog roll in Tesco's if, if you need him to. Um, you know, right at the back where no one can reach. <laughs> Um, and I feel like he'd be quite a resourceful, um, humbling gent to be around in, in times of need. I feel like Tim Krull is the kind of guy that can can do everything mm. in the home. He can he can mow the lawn, he can cook the dinner, mm. he can clean the house. You know, he's a modern he's a modern bloke, and, and that's what I love to see. So for me, Tim Krull is my current player. I would be quarantined with. Okay, my current player. I, if I want to be quarantined with someone, we're having to spend long periods of time together. I need them. To make me happy, so I'm going with Tim Close. Um, okay. I think Timmy is is slightly bonkers, um, which is good in this situation. I see Timmy Close as being a man who can cook up a fantastic cheese on toast, and I think that cheese on toast is really vital food at, at these times. Bread is fairly easy to get. There's plenty of cheese on the shelves. Put a bit of Worcester sauce on there, and you've got a really homely meal. So, speaking of cheese, mm. sorry. <laughs> Public this service is- announcement this weekend, and this is the other thing we're gonna we're gonna help out local businesses over the next few weeks. This weekend, the cheese truckle, um, which is of course my father-in-law to be, John Killett at Cheesy Geezer on Twitter, his business are ho- are, are hosting uh, basically an open warehouse and all of the restaurant quality cheese that they'd normally supply to the restaurants. They are saying, look, guys, come and get it. It's to the public. Of course, you're paying for it, but it's at, it's at warehouse price, not supermarket price. So this is the opportunity to get yourselves quality bit of Stilton, a lovely bit of Camembert, a proper, proper Red Leicester, ghost cheese, you name it, at Cheesy Geezer has got it. It's at Lenway, the warehouse, and I will be making an announcement um, across my socials shortly. So please feel free to get yourself some cheese. To, you know, stockpile cheese. Why not? Brilliant. Yeah, and I tell you what, I'm going to give you a recipe. Actually, if if you're yeah. if you are buying some cheese this weekend, Chris, I'm a big fan of the olive and goat cheese tartlet. Um, I'll, you I'll send you, I'll you send you the recipe that. over. It's an absolute corker. Is it Delia's um, recipe? It's not actually. No, I'm not doing it. Then simple as that. I, I, I got one A star in my GCSEs and that was in catering. And it was all because of the goat's cheese and olive tartlet. Miss Amadio, my, my old um, catering teacher, said it was one of the finest tartlets she'd ever tasted. Um, 
I'll tell you one. I'll tell you my um, on a just to go back to the question. Poor old Ollie Barnard's been waiting for this for at least half an hour now. <laughs> um, former player Ebo Pinto. Okay. Pitch War Yellow Army. Mm. He is with you literally. Sorry to say it in, until the death. Yeah. Um, and he would fight to you to the very end. So uh, Pitch War Yellow Army. Ebo Pinto is my former player. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for Kai Kamara. Oh, lift your spirits, yeah. motivational. Yeah, really I'd, right. I'd just be waking up and maybe maybe I've started to develop a tickly throat and he's just there at the end of the bed with his heart-shaped hands. <laughs> just really cheering me up. That's I hope he's not the end of your bed, mate, but we'll leave that one out for this podcast. Well, you know, you just, just to keep your morals high. Anyway, let's go on to the next question. Um, <laughs> this comes in from Josh. Uh, Josh didn't leave his surname, so we'll just go with Josh. He says, which former Norwich City player do you most do you miss watching the most, I'd give you anything to see John and Semmerborn marauled down the right wing at Caro <laughs> just one more time. Oh, that's class. Uh, Johnny up Semmerborn, he's fucking shit, he's fucking shit. Do you remember singing that? that no, I, I don't like to slag our own players off. Um, neither do I, but it's a bit of banter, Jack. A bit of light-hearted banter is required sometimes in the world. We do need to actually remember to joke. Um <laughs> So the question is, is, which former player would I want to watch again? I know it's a bit of a basic answer, but for me, we've never, ever truly replaced him, Darren Huckabee. Mm. As a kid, watching, supporting Norwich got me off my feet. Got, not just me, got the whole... There was there was just this feeling of he picked up the ball, and even when before he picked up the ball, when Jury had the ball, and you were waiting for him to feed Hux, and you were on your edge of your seat, and when Hux went, you were up. Yeah, yeah. And the whole stadium could... Could, was, was anticipating this magic moment, this injection of pace. But as well, he, he was just a, I would describe a ferocious player to watch. Someone that, you know, you wouldn't mess around with. An athlete, someone of real high pedigree and someone that actually we're so blessed and lucky that the club managed to actually take a gamble on and it paid off on, for sure. Definitely. I think I think we did have that kind of, not the same calibre, but we had that that intake of breath when a player collected a ball in Onel Hernandez last season for chunks of it, not all of it. But that I think that was the closest we've come, and I agree. Yeah. Huckabee was, was a fantastic player. I'm going to go slightly off piece here, like I usually do. Go on. And I'm going to say I want to see a former player, but under a different manager to what he played under. So I want to see Ricky Van Wolfswinkle in. Daniel Farker team, team. Yeah, in the Daniel Farker team because I just so wanted it to work for Ricky badly and it didn't happen and it wouldn't. It was never going to happen under Chris Hewen. But I think he would have scored goals in the side, Chris. Did you... Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> did you see the uh, the club's Twitter account the other day? They tweeted that Everton goal, that inflated yeah, yeah. Everton goal. And one of the things that I forgot about is the uh, the, uh, the the Scottish Iniesta's uh, cross. It was awful, wasn't it? <laughs> It was sh- completely <laughs> fucking shit. He didn't even mean. He didn't even mean it. He literally just, literally just slung it in the box. Yeah. Is the only way to describe it. And for Ricky to get onto the other end of that was just superb. But I didn't. Re- I didn't realise in my head I had this beautifully poetic mm. goal that I was just rewinding over and over, which was weird picking it up and kind of bending it in like Beckham. But no, he just slung it in the mixer, didn't he? Yeah, I agree. Well, I don't even think it was a cross. It was a very sliced shot that just landed on Ricky's head, which was fantastic. <laughs> and I was also really disappointed to see people going, oh, it was it was Ricky's one and only goal. People are forgetting he scored against, scored against Rotherham in the cup. Banger as well, by that. the way. Sorry? Banger as well, by yeah, the way. Absolute screamer. Okay, let's get um, let's get one more question then. We'll, we'll get some more questions later in the week on the on the TNC podcast remote. Um, if this episode hits one hundred likes, the next question comes in from Andrew Kent, and he asks if you could go back last season and change one Norwich City result, what would it be and why? Well, first of all, um, hi Andrew. Great question. Um, I think the it's tough actually to think of a game, of a, game a single game, because I view that season as a season where we easily won every game, but of course we we, we didn't. Um, was last season the season of the Derby County floodlight? It was. That for me, I would change that because um, me and you fell out over that, Jack. <laughs> we did, you, yeah. You claimed that the floodlight actually um, was a legitimate reason for us losing that fixture. 
Whereas I remember slamming you and saying, no, Zimmerman should have just planted it into row Z rather than fanning around with it. Mm. So for me, it's that Derby County result. Yeah, same here. Definitely. Um, right, we're going to end it here, mainly because our internet connections probably won't hold up with much more. But that's a good sort of 20 minutes of, of valuable content talking from him. Valuable content. <laughs> <laughs> Great range of everything from cheese gonna, to, um, to wait for sunshine We're going to do some more, shots. aren't we, Jack? We, we, we're going to do some more, aren't we? We're going to um, talk some complete nonsense. Mm. I mean, it may be in line. I think we should open up uh, some serious, serious debate and discussion around eggs and potatoes. Mm. Uh, people that follow uh, Jack on Twitter would understand the pain that I've had to witness uh, through those absolutely shocking rankings. So, you know, if you're watching this now, give us a tweet. Let us know what you want to see next on the TNC podcast. We're going to be covering all sorts of lifestyle topics. Mm. Um, yeah, for sure. And, and also, I have seen someone enter the Revo Pochi competition this morning. Now, if you don't know what the Revo Pochi competition is, you have to send a video on your Instagram feed of you making poached eggs and present them in the best possible way um, yeah. and try and beat Chris's efforts. Now, Chris is a talented man, but his talents definitely peak at poaching eggs. He is really, really quite special at them. So if you want and you're bored, get some eggs if you've got them, poach them and send them with the hashtag Revo's Poachies and tag them in, uh, tag us in them and we'll have a look. Um, last thing, Jack, I'm not sure, we're not actually entirely sure because we've not actually spoken about this fully yet, but we have spoken about the idea. Um, over the coming days, uh, we're going to be using the Talk Norwich City social media accounts to shout out local businesses. That's local to Norfolk. Um, so please feel free uh, to get in touch with us. Um, if it's a restaurant, for example, and you're trying to get people to buy vouchers, please get in touch. If there's a particular offer that you're putting on to try and, try and get some funds in the door, please, please, please um, get in touch with us. Feel free to send either of us a DM. We're going to collate a list together and then we're going to do a big shout out, aren't we, Jack? Yeah, massively. And if you haven't got Twitter, then my email address is in the description of this video. So uh, ping me an email. Uh, I've got time to reply, so I certainly will. Um, Chris, thank you. I hope, you're, I hope you're well. The kitchen looks very tidy, so well done on that. Um, I'm going to go do some hoovering, I think. I think I've spotted some, some fluff on the carpet this morning, so I'm going to go what do some... That? What is that behind you, by the way? What was that pink thing behind you? Oh, they're, Gen, the... they're Jen's slippers. I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> I should have probably put them away. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks very much for watching, and we'll, uh, we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.